In this video, we're going to talk about scheduling in Build Exact. We're going to start by looking at how to actually create the schedule. Then we're going to look at how to move items, how to mark the completion of tasks, how to set reminders. And lastly, we're going to explore settings and printing of the exporting of the schedule out of the system. Now, to begin, we're going to land here in the job as a part of the scheduling section. And effectively starting, I want to begin by looking at different ways to actually create the items in the schedule. And in Build Exact, there's going to be three different ways to do this. The first way is actually going to take us back to the estimate costings. We've covered this off in a previous video. But essentially here, if an item has a quote total, I can go ahead and hit the T button at any stage, whether the job's created or not, doesn't matter. But now that I've hit that T button there, when I go back to the schedule, it's then going to pull in the item as well as the category if the category isn't there. So I can see that item now because it's in rental items, just the category, also referred to as the parent. And I can go ahead and hit this little plus button on the left, which will expand the category out. And I can see that crane rental has now come across as well as the two previous items that were previously clicked using the T button. So that's the first way to get items in the schedule, simply by hitting the T button. The second way is I can add additional items into a category by simply hitting the plus button here. So I might make an internal reminder to say, call to book in crane hire. Um, at this stage, I'm not gonna cover everything else in this screen. We will come back to it in a little bit for reasons I'll explain uh, then. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and give my task a name, hit save, and that'll then put 1.4 in uh, into my schedule. Now, the third and final way to build the schedule really picks up on a theme that's all across Build Exact, and it's going to be through the use of templates here. So essentially, once you've built your schedule out, you could, if you look at that and think, yep, that's how you commonly run that type of project, then you can go ahead and then save that as a template. And when you save these templates, they're very, very powerful. And highlighting that what's saved in the template is the parent and child tasks. So again, that's category and item. Duration delay or lag in between tasks, reminder settings, notes, allocated resources, and any dependencies you have set up. And again, oh, we'll go through how to do all of this in a few moments, but really here, just wanna highlight that these templates save a lot of information. And then when you have saved your schedule template, then to apply the schedule template, you just simply click on templates. And now you can underneath this thin line, you'll be able to then see, there's my template I previously uh, saved and I can go ahead and give it a click. And when I do that, a couple of things, is firstly, I can decide if I want to remove any of the existing items and replace with this schedule template, or I can also add the template after existing tasks. And this is a really important point because this really gives you the ability to stack schedule templates on top of each other. So you can sort of build them in a more modular approach and then decide at this stage uh, which of the templates you want to apply and then apply it at the bottom as an example. You can then also state which following uh, start date for those tasks. Uh, and then from there, we can go ahead and select of the items that we've saved as a part of the schedule template, uh, which ones do we want to pull across? And so you might say, look, don't, so don't do reminders, don't do notes, but maybe we want to have the contractors and suppliers and any dependencies set up. So schedule templates are really, really quite rich. But from here, once we have this stuff onto the schedule, we now want to talk a little bit about how do we start to move this stuff around? And effectively, there's a couple different ways we can move things around, but the most common and the easiest way, in my opinion, is to simply click on an item. And when I do, I'm basically going to look at sort of hovering over the middle section. You'll see my mouse will indicate that. And once I see that, I can then simply click and hold my mouse and then drag the item left or right to change the day in which I want that item to start on. So again, just simply clicking and dragging the items across to move them to their respective area. And from there, to actually extend the duration, all I need to do then is hover on the left or the right of the item and your mouse will change. The icon in which your browser will sort of indicate you're on the right spot may look different, but generally it has something to do with an arrow. And once I see that arrow, I can then simply click and hold my mouse to then extend the duration of how long that task or item will take. So again, very, very simple, just to simply click and move the items around, uh, extending them across where they need to go. Now, quick point here, uh, sometimes you may click an item and be try to drag it and nothing happens. And that's probably going to be because that's the category. I can tell and distinguish the category from the item, so the child versus the parent, primarily through one of two ways. 
the most common and the easiest way for me is really just looking at that the parent has a slightly bolder text, whereas the child is really the non-bold text. And so in that, the parent here isn't actually an item. It's really a collection of items. So it simply just follows along with the first and the last item in the schedule as we move through. The other way to discern which is the parent and the uh, child is really just casting your eyes left here, where I can see the number one be rental items. That'll be the parent, whereas the point ones, the point twos, the point threes, that's going to be the child, the tasks inside of it. So two quick visual different ways there. If you're trying to click and move something and something's not happening, that's really what's happening in that play there. So now we have the items in our schedule. Now we're starting to move them around. The next thing we want to do is talk a little bit about how we toggle progress in the schedule. And that is to say that really from the top right hand side here and a couple of other different areas of build exact, we will mark the progress and a percentage. And that's really derived off the schedule. So to toggle the progress, there's a couple of different ways. But the most common way here is to simply when I hover over the item, a little triangle will appear on the left. And when I click and hold that triangle and move it across, that will then automatically change the color to denote that progress has happened. Uh, and you can see here, not complete. So there's basically the not complete section, there's the complete, and the category uh, will also uh, basically automatically toggle as well too. And in that, it will also have a little triangle. So if maybe I don't want to go through and mark every individual item off, maybe I've been on site all day and some you know concrete slab has been poured or something like that, I want to mark them all off or general progress of the category, I can simply hover over top and click and drag that across as well. And that will then automatically toggle progress on the items inside of it. So a couple of different ways, just depending on a variety of circumstances. Next thing we want to do is talk a little bit about how do we connect items together through dependencies. And so for that, there's two different ways to do dependencies in Build Exact. The first way is really by hovering over an item. I'm going to get these little circles that'll pop to the left and the right. And always going from finish to start, I can simply click and hold my mouse, drag it to a corresponding item. And when I get close to it, it'll the other items, little circles will appear and it'll kind of snap into play. And when the corresponding item circle has gone sort of a solid color, as you can see there, that's just built exact telling me I'm in the right spot where I can now let my mouse go. And it will then basically just mark in the dependency there. Now, what that basically just means is let's just say there's a minimum lag time in between these items. And if perhaps something happens and this item gets delayed, if I click and drag this across, then that'll automatically adjust that item and any other items which are already connected as well through dependencies to in this chain, it'll automatically adjust them forward. So really, really handy. And obviously much of our construction process works like this, where uh, items can't start until preceding items are finished. So, you know, the walls can't go up before the concrete goes in and the, um, the drywall can't go up before the electricals, uh, you know, initially done and, and those sorts of situations. So very, very easy to go through and, and create your dependencies in the system. Now, there is a second way to create dependencies. And for that, I'm going to go to my settings section and I'm going to toggle on what we refer to as automatic dependencies. And effectively, what an automatic dependency is, is it's going to treat the entire job schedule like one giant dependency in a top-down format. So really, that's just to say that if I go to item 1.1 and I click and drag that across, everything below it will automatically adjust. Whereas, say, I go a little further down in my schedule. Let me open this category up as an example. Let's just say, uh, you know, we've started the project and perhaps we had to stop because of a weather or a permit issue or something along those lines. So if let's just say all this has really been started and, and well in progress, but everything below is obviously going to be impacted. So when I move item 2.1, everything above it will stay the same. Everything below it will automatically adjust forward. And moving down one more item, if I click and drag that across again, you'll see the item above it will stay the same. The item below it will automatically have adjusted. So again, very common in a number of real world circumstances. And another reason why I really like automatic dependencies is it also really, as you can see, keeps uh, the items in the schedule really moving along with me as I build it, as typically items at the top of the list happen earlier in the project and items at the bottom of the list happen later on. So this is really handy. When you're building your schedule just as it really just moves all the items along with you and saves you from having to sort of navigate back to the start and then you know drag the item weeks or months further in advance one tip and trick though i definitely recommend is if you have turned automatic dependencies on once you've completed whatever task you need to do um, definitely recommend to turn the automatic dependencies off and mainly because there's nothing really visually uh, to indicate the automatic dependencies are turned on and sometimes it's really easy to forget you may have or 
somebody else in, in uh, Buildy Zach, uh, you know, somebody else who's running a project or something like that may have turned them on, made some adjustments and not turned them off. So it really just means if it's turned on, you move something, as we've seen, it'll, you know, things will automatically jump forward. And it's not the end of the world. It's a very easy thing to fix, but it's also just a simple thing to avoid just by making sure the automatic dependencies are turned off. Next up, we're going to jump into an item now, and I'm going to do that by simply clicking the item and then hitting edit here. And we come back into this screen, which we saw earlier. And why I come back into it in this stage is really just to note that much of the stuff we've done already, you can also do in the task itself, specifically setting things like start date, duration, and end dates, and also toggling progress in 25% increments. And my experience has really shown that most people prefer to click and drag the items on the schedule, really the first couple ways I've shown you. Um, whereas this can sometimes be a little bit tedious clicking into every single one, with the exception being that if you are booking something, let's say months or even in some cases, you know, a year plus in advance, this is actually, it can be a great way that instead of trying to drag an item through many, many months, if you know something's happening on a specific day, then you can quickly jump in here and then mark that off as required. Further down on the schedule, we're going to come into some new functionality here, i.e. where I can actually go ahead and assign a task to a contact already in Build Exact. I can then go further by setting automatic reminders to come out a certain amount of time beforehand. And generally speaking, we recommend to not really put it too far in the future. Uh, we know it's very easy for people to sort of forget about, you know, text message or email reminders they got sort of, uh, you know, a month or three weeks or two weeks or sometimes even a week ago. So generally a couple of days out is sort of advised just to make sure it's, you know, not forgotten about. Uh, if these little sections are gray, by the way, and they're not clickable, it's really just indicating that the uh, contact section on the left-hand side is going to be missing either the SMS and or email for that particular person. So if you're not able to tick them on, you will need to go back into the contact section and then update it accordingly. And then, of course, from there, I can add in any notes I may need to as well. As So that could include uh, just maybe site access details, lockbox combos, or anything along those lines. Awesome. A couple other things we want to talk a little bit about now. So once you have built your schedule out, you're probably going to want to get it out of Build Exact. And so for that, I can either automatically email the job task list out, or what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to hit the print button where I'm going to see both the job task list again, but specifically I want to focus on the Gantt chart. Now, before I hit the print Gantt chart button out, a really key thing to note is that once I do hit that button, what Build Exact is basically doing is taking a screenshot of how my my Gantt chart will look at a moment. And that's relevant because depending on who I'm intending to give that Gantt chart to may mean that I want to open or close different categories uh, to really show different levels of information. So for example, if you're giving it to the client, perhaps you want to uh, collapse it all. So they just see sort of a high level overview of when things are happening. Whereas potentially you may be giving something to a, uh, a contractor or somebody along those lines. So you might want to open up only their category. Maybe they only need to see when their things are happening, but to get a broad overview of everything else. Or if you're giving it to your workers on site or other parties and you just want them to see everything, then you can expand all uh, and then obviously show them that level of detail. So it's really up to you in terms of how much detail is uh, appropriate for the Gantt chart. But again, once I've made those settings, I'm going to go ahead and hit the print button, print the Gantt chart off. And I can print off in a couple formats, but I'm just going to do as a PDF here just to show. And just like that, I have my Gantt chart all ready to go. The last couple of things I want to touch on here in the schedule is just some, some general things that are good to know. Uh, specifically here under settings, uh, we very much encourage you to enter in your non-working days. Uh, these would be things like holidays or any absences where you know you're not going to be on site. And essentially what these do is they just allow Building Act to skip those days when calculating duration. And as a part of that, you do have the ability to exclude weekends in duration. Um, obviously, if you are working weekends, then better to turn that off. But as a default, we will automatically exclude the weekends in duration, and that will then affect the duration calculation uh, over here. And that's how to create a schedule and build exact. Mm -hmm.